Hi, it's been a while since we've done a review video and I have got a big pile of stuff to get through. So we'll start with this Raiden Pals Pie, which was sent to me a while ago. Uh, this is the latest incarnation of the RD6006. This one is the 6006P version. And from what I can see, basically the P suggests it's the precision version. As you can see, we've got an extra digit of resolution on the front panel. And I think there's a few differences in this specification. So this unit was provided to me free of charge by Banggood for the review. And there's two different versions. There's the one that I've received, which has no Wi-Fi board, uh, $67 plus a dollar shipping. And then there is the one that includes that Wi-Fi board for $70 plus another dollar shipping. So uh, very similar in price to the standard 6006. And the main difference from what I can see is just that ability to control and read out the extra digit. Uh, the input and output voltages and power is pretty similar to the previous versions, but you just get that extra digit of resolution when setting the voltage and current and when reading it back. But looking at the accuracy, it suggests that it's probably got the same reference in there. Uh, you're just able to set that with more resolution because the, the tolerance is slightly worse in terms of percentage plus an extra digit. When you average those up, it's probably about the same, uh, you know, 1% here instead of 0.5% plus five digits plus six digits. So I think it's the same thing. It does also suggest that uh, the output voltage ripple is a little bit better, but I can't see where that note is. Um, so I don't know what that is dependent on. Other than that, pretty much the same story overall. Um, not really any differences there. So from the front, it looks pretty similar to the previous versions, but looking at the backside, this has undergone a significant redesign. The display board looks exactly the same, that's the green one underneath, but this power supply board doesn't resemble any of the previous units that we've looked at. Uh, what I don't know is whether this is a redesign board for sort of all of the 6006 versions, or whether this is just a spin just for this precision version, but there's a lot going on on here that wasn't there previously. I can see an isolating DC to DC converter here, which is quite interesting quite a chunky heatsink here which didn't exist on any of the previous boards. So uh, certainly there's quite a lot more to this version uh, than I was expecting. So this top section up here appears to be where all the magic is happening. So this is definitely a version of the PCB just for this version. Uh, we've got a Titan Micro TM7707 which is a 24-bit dual channel ADC. So that's where we're getting our readings from. And that appears to be a fairly well-specced part from the parts of the data sheet that I can understand. And then in terms of the actual reference, it's this TI part here. So it's a TI DAC 8582. This is a 16-bit dual DAC, but it also has that 2.5 volt reference built in. And that is what is giving us our accuracy that they're claiming in the data sheet. Then we've got a little 8-bit ST micro uh, controller here which didn't exist in any of the other versions. I suspect that is to interface with all of this stuff and then communicate in the normal way uh, to the rest of the board but we've got uh, a couple of octocouplers and stuff here so this all appears to be either floating up at the high side or floating somewhere else because we've got this isolating DT to DC converter here as well. So uh, a slightly interesting topology there. The rest of it doesn't look um, too dissimilar. We've got all the usual MOSFETs fused protection, we've got a relay to turn the output on and off, we've got the uh, the fan and the heat sink on the main MOSFETs, uh, and then on this side this is all the same as the previous design, so we've got the XL Semi DC to DC converter which is providing us our power for the electronics, and the actual switching conversion is done by this TL594. So we might just be able to get a probe in here and see how good that reference actually is. So. I think this is a ground pad on the little uh, programming header. And then there's a little capacitor which looks like it's connected across the 2.5 volt reference out from that DAC. And yeah, that's bang on 2.5 volts. I might just fire up the Agilent 6.5 digit meter. So a quick look on the Agilent 34410A and we're just a couple of digits out. So that's pretty good on that reference. So with a decent reference like the one that we've got in here, we should be able to get fairly decent performance from this power supply. Obviously, it depends a little bit on the control loop. It depends on the linearity of the DACs and the ADC, which is separate to that reference. 
and also the calibration. Uh, it depends how they've done the calibration. If it's just a simple two-point calibration, if there are non-linearities between these two DACs and ADCs, then we may get some results that aren't exactly as it indicates on the front. But I think the next step is to actually test this out. Okay, so we're all hooked up. We're connected to a power supply set to about 61 volts, so that's about as high as we're going to be able to go on here. Currently, we're set to 1 volt, 1 amp, so no load on this, just the multimeter. Let's turn it on. And it's reading about 0 0.999 volts, and we're reading pretty much exactly 1 volt on the meter up there. So certainly within specification there, let's increase the voltage slightly uh, to a common voltage, 3.3. 3 3.3 .3 on the display. And just one digit out according to the multimeter. 5 volts. So just one, cap, one digit under on here, and 5 volts exactly there. So again... Perfectly within spec. 10 volts. Just between 9.999 and 10 volts. And we're reading 10.001. So again, just one digit out at the end. 24 volts. It's reading 24 volts pretty much exactly. And the reading on the multimeter correlates with that exactly. So that's pretty good. 48 volts, just a couple of digits under on the readout, and a similar story up on the multimeter, so about three digits out there on the third decimal place. And then I don't think we'll be able to set it much higher than about 59 volts with that 60 volt input. So just a couple of counts out there, and the same on the multimeter. So. The voltage readings look pretty much within spec, certainly very accurate. Let's have a quick look at what the current readings are looking like. Right, so I've hooked up the DC load in series with the multimeter and the power supply, and I've just set the limit on here to 2.5 amps. Uh, I think the limit on my multimeter is 3 amps for the fuse that's in it, so I've set it a bit lower just to protect that. And what we're going to do is use the DC load to control the current and see how the number here correlates with the number on the multimeter. So it's currently set to 100 milliamps and we can see we're about two counts out, uh, two digits out there. Let's increase that to 200 milliamps. So again, two digits out, almost three just at the end. 300 milliamps, again almost three digits out. At 500 milliamps we are three digits out exactly. At 1 amp, we're getting closer to 4 digits out there, but that's still within spec. And then this is the current limit on the Raiden, 2.5002, and about the same on the multimeter. So that seems to work quite nicely. Let's change the current limit on here instead. So let's change that to 1 amp. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it seems to work quite nicely actually. Um, current 0.1 amps. So 100 milliamps, yeah, about two digits out. So it's about the same on the setting as it is versus reading back. But it seems to work quite nicely. Certainly not really any problem here. Let's set it to something much lower. So at 1 milliamp, we're just reading slightly under on the display, but the actual setting is much closer to what it's reading on the multimeter. Let's try something even lower. 0 0.0001, which is about as low as it can go. Um, it's not quite accurate at that point, so 0 0.2 milliamps. We should be able to set that to 0 0.1, but it's not allowing us to do that. Let's try... Yeah, it's quite inaccurate, below about a milliamp. Should be half a milliamp. We're reading about 100 microamps above that. But other than that, uh, once you're above about a milliamp, it seems to be pretty accurate. Uh, those very low settings, maybe we're just running out of resolution on the DAC. Right, so we'll just do a quick AC ripple measurement. Now, I've connected up 34410A in AC voltage mode, and this does actually have a high bandwidth AC input. 
so you should be able to get a reasonable idea of what's going on. Uh, I've got the DC load connected across the terminals of the power supply. So let's turn it on with no load. And we're reading about a quarter of a millivolt AC. So if we now turn the DC load on, 100 milliamps, sorry, at 1 amp, we're getting about 1.3 millivolts AC of ripple. Let's increase the current. 2 amps, very similar, about 1.5 millivolts AC. 4 amps, it's actually dropped a little bit. So quite low at 5 volts. Let's increase the voltage a little bit and see how that changes things. So we'll go for 24 volts here. Now we're dumping 26 watts into the DC load. And again, the ripple's not looking too bad at all. 50 watts, and again about 1 millivolt AC. So certainly nothing too concerning in terms of what we can measure with the multimeter. I'm not going to hook up the scope um, because there's a lot of reasons why you might see noise on the scope. You know, there's um, stuff in the room even that's going to contribute to it. So I'm not going to go down that route, but just an indication that the ripple is not that bad actually. It's certainly uh, reading below 20 millivolts depending on how they've specified that. Um, so pretty good overall. Overall, this seems like a worthy upgrade over the standard RD6006, and as it's currently priced exactly the same as the RD6006 on Banggood at the moment, if you were buying one, it makes absolute sense just to go for this one instead. Now, obviously, do bear in mind, you probably still do want to buy the chassis and the AC to DC power supply, so that's all additional cost. Um, the $67 is just for the unit on its own. It says, I think normally, that the price is somewhere around $120, but I've never actually seen it for that price. Similarly, for the 6006, it says it's normally about $90, and again, I rarely see it for anywhere over $70. But certainly, this is a worthy upgrade. It behaves quite nicely. They've also obviously put a lot of work here into the revised PCB as well. Um, so, you know, it does seem to behave very nicely and work really well. Whether you need the additional resolution and digits on a DC power supply, um, that's probably more for you to decide. I certainly have never encountered a situation where I'm using the DC power supply itself to control to that kind of resolution. But it's nice to have it there, especially if there's hardly any cost implication to the device itself. So I think that's about it for this review. I will put a link up here for one of my other videos where I look at one of these more in depth. But a big thank you to Banggood for providing this for the review. Links in the description down below. Also thank you to JLC PCB, the channel sponsor, for sponsoring these videos. So I hope you found the video useful. Any comments, leave them down below. Until next time, thanks for watching.